candy has multiple uses. You can eat it. Uh, you can feed it to your pets as a uh, supplement, vitamins. Um, and it's also in pharmaceuticals. You find it in all sorts of makeup. You find it in your ice cream. Um, and we're looking to potentially increase those number of uses. So we've got chemists working to find other extracts, maybe antioxidants, maybe anti-cancer uh, agents. Possible uses are, you know, enormous. So at the moment, fossil fuels, we know we're running out, and we know we have a limited supply. Algae uh, are sustainable, renewable resource, and they can start to replace our liquid fossil fuels. So my name's Dr. Adam Powell. I'm a research officer at Swans University. Swansea uh, University is the lead partner for the Energetic Algae Project, which is also known as NALGI for short. So um, NALGI is really all about how we can um, use applied uh, technology uh, with algae, be it uh, microalgae or macroalgae, to assist uh, enterprises within Northwest Europe. Well, the aims of the project are really to find um, a sustainable ways of producing renewable energy. We know that um, renewable energy has been, is centuries old. People burn things and that combusts and that produces some form of energy to either heat homes, to fuel uh, fires and so on for food, etc, etc. So many people are aware that fossil fuels are being depleted. But a lot of people don't realise that the petrol and diesel you put in your car that comes from crude oil, that's actually fossilised algae. That's algae that's been underground for millions of years. High pressures and temperatures have created crude oil. So what we're trying to do is um, create al uh, oil from algae. We're trying to really uh, abbreviate that, those millions of years into perhaps a couple of weeks. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of processing involved to raw algae to actually get uh, fuel oil. I run a pilot site out of Queen's University of Belfast and we're working on growing macroalgae or seaweeds and specifically we're working on growing some of the kelp species. And these are fast growing large uh, seaweeds and we can grow them on long lines out in the sea and so we can over six months period they grow from about a centimeter to up to a couple meters and so there's a huge potential for uh, biomass production and using that biomass we can then ferment it down and from that you can make a biogas which is potentially a very good source of biofuels. A photobioreactor is basically, a, you could say it's a fancy name for a, for a pond or, 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 a, or a reactor. I mean people are, uh, are very uh, fairly used to reactors for uh, biotechnology looking at yeasts and, 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 uh, and bacteria. So brewing really is a form of, of, of biotechnology. They use reactors uh, for brewing uh, yeasts. There's very little difference between that and a photobioreactor, but the photo gives you a clue. You need light, algae need light, so that's why it's a photobioreactor. We tend to say PBR for short. The aim to our research really is to show that we can do this on an industrial scale. At the moment we do it in a laboratory on sort of a sort of, uh, lab, sort of liters, you know, couple couple bits of algae. Um, what we're trying to do is grow it on sort of a hectare scale and upscale it and show that it's possible to make money doing this and then we can sell it to industry and show that it is a sustainable resource and a sustainable way of producing fuels and biofuels. Uh, no, not surprised but pleased that, it, that it's, it's going on. Yeah. I'd be very interested to see how it develops. I think this type of research is definitely important um, because without it um, we're not really moving forwards and I think that renewable energies and um, you know being able to use our resources to their maximum capacity are, well it's essential for our survival as a human race really.